Hello, and welcome to another edition of Orthopedic Sports Medicine Patient Educational Series with Dr. Adam Jarecki. There are many types of meniscal tears. You can have single plane tears that occur in relatively high vascular areas of the meniscus that are more amendable to meniscal repair. You can have a specific type of meniscal tear called a meniscal root tear, where the meniscus tears from the floor. Or, what we're going to talk about in this video is more degenerative meniscal tears, meaning tears that are more complex or horizontal in nature and are not necessarily amendable to repair. Meniscal tears are by far one of the most common injuries that we see in orthopedic sports medicine. They can occur from a number of different reasons. Oftentimes patients report an incident where they're placing the knee into hyperflexion, whether they're kneeling or squatting, they're trying to get up from a kneel or squat, and they have acute onset of pain or symptoms in the area of their meniscus, either on the inside portion or outside portion of their knee. In other patients, especially with degenerative meniscal tears, these tears can happen slowly or progressively over time and don't necessarily need to have an associated history of trauma to the knee in order to occur. With these patients, they present with progressively worsening pain in their knee that seems to wax and wane. So they may have pain that's very bad for a day or for a week, but then it may go away for a day or a week. And so patients can go a long period of time with a meniscal tear, starting to think that their tear is getting better or that their symptoms are improving only to find that their symptoms recur. In order to better understand why patients have these intermittent symptoms associated meniscal tears, let's take a closer look at the anatomy of the meniscus and how the meniscal tear results in recurrent pain and symptoms. Okay, let's look closer at the anatomy of the knee, specifically the anatomy of the meniscus. Here we have a right knee this is the outside or the lateral part of the knee. This is the inside or the medial part of the knee. If we look on the inside of the knee, there are two types of cartilage within the knee. You have the cartilage that lines the end of the bone, which in this model is blue. It lines all of the bones of our body. In real life, this is white. This is called the articular cartilage. Articular cartilage is like the rubbery stuff on the end of a chicken bone if you look inside of the joint. As this cartilage wears thin, it's almost like a car tire losing its tread or going bald. This is essentially what the rest of the world calls arthritis. The second type of cartilage in the knee is the meniscal cartilage. The meniscus lines the outer portion of the joint really on both sides of the knee. This is your medial meniscus, and this is the lateral meniscus. The meniscus lines the knee all the way to the back of the knee on both sides. The meniscus functions by deepening the socket and allowing for additional cushioning or shock absorption when you're playing sports or working. But it's soft, like the cartilage in your ear. And so it can be pinched or trapped between the two bones, particularly as you go into deep flexion. If you load the meniscus while simultaneously twisting on the tissue, you can cause a meniscal tear. When the meniscus tears, if the torn piece is flipped back where it tore from, you can have a relatively normal day. If that piece flips out of place, it can get caught or pinched between the two bones and cause significant amount of pain. This is why oftentimes, based on the position of your torn meniscus, determines whether or not you're having a symptomatic day. As part of a knee arthroscopy, we will go into the knee through two little poke holes on each side of the kneecap into the joint with a camera. We identify where the tear is located and we simply remove the piece of the meniscus that's torn. While in the knee, we'll be able to evaluate the remainder of the meniscus. We will also be able to evaluate 
the other meniscus on the other side of the knee joint, as well as evaluate the condition of the cartilage on the surface of the bone to assess just how much arthritis is also associated with the meniscal tear. If you are watching this video, it's likely because you have been told that you have a meniscal tear. Unfortunately, the meniscus is made out of cartilage, and cartilage has an inherently poor blood supply. Without a blood supply, the tissues cannot heal. This is why oftentimes patients with meniscal tear have had many months of symptoms before they present to my office. Unfortunately, once you are diagnosed with a meniscal tear, you can treat it in any number of ways, whether it be shots, anti-inflammatories, physical therapy, bracing, activity modifications, work restrictions. At the end of the day, because the tear never heals on its own, as you try to go back to the activities that aggravate your meniscal tear, it will continue to give you pain or problems, and it never heals on its own. This is why patients are sent to my office, because ultimately meniscal tears require surgical intervention. We initially will evaluate the knee with standing x-rays. This allows us to see exactly how much associated arthritis is in the knee and gives us a better sense as to how much space there is left between the two bones. The definitive diagnosis for a meniscal tear, however, is made with an MRI scan. The MRI allows us to see the cartilage and the ligaments within the knee that the x-ray otherwise cannot. Oftentimes, Patients who present to my office with an acute meniscal tear also have underlying osteoarthritis of the knee. Although they may have been dealing with some pre-existing knee pain prior to their injury, the injury has made their pain much more severe and is now affecting their activities of daily living or their ability to perform their duties at their job. This is a very common scenario. It is important to distinguish the pain that is caused from osteoarthritis versus the pain that's caused from the meniscal tear. Osteoarthritis related pain is more of a dull, achy, toothache pain that can be worse in the morning or worse when you are first getting up out of the car or after you've been sitting for prolonged periods of time. It is also worse with increasing exertional activities. Whereas the pain associated with a meniscal tear is more of a sharp, stabbing pain and can oftentimes be associated with clicking, catching, or popping in the knee. And in the worst case scenario, can be associated with episodes of the knee locking up or getting stuck in one position. The way that we treat symptoms related to a meniscal tear is very different than the way that we treat symptoms related to osteoarthritis. Pain related to a meniscal tear often requires formal arthroscopic surgery to go in and remove the torn meniscal fragment. But at the end of the day, a knee arthroscopy does nothing to treat your underlying osteoarthritis of the knee. Therefore, it is important to realize that patients who have underlying osteoarthritis may continue to have pain or symptoms in their knee related to the underlying osteoarthritis following their knee arthroscopy. Oftentimes it is difficult to tell preoperatively how much of your pain or symptoms are due to the meniscal tear versus the underlying osteoarthritis. Oftentimes we aren't going to figure that out until the dust settles from the surgery and we see what of the symptoms have resolved as a result of removing the torn meniscus and how much have remained as a result of the underlying osteoarthritis. I like to wait at least a month or two following a knee arthroscopy so that the knee and leg is fully recovered before we conclude that the pain is still coming from your underlying osteoarthritis. At that point, we do have options to treat osteoarthritis-related pain with different forms of intraarticular injections into the knee. Meniscal surgery is performed with a simple knee arthroscopy or a knee scope. Knee scopes are performed by two poke holes in the skin where we go into the knee with a camera. With the camera, we are able to see and identify the location of your meniscal tear. We then remove the portion of the meniscus that is torn or is unstable or flipping around within the knee. Any portion of the meniscus that we identify as still stable or still functioning, we leave behind. This procedure is called a meniscectomy. In the early history of meniscal surgery, 
they used to feel as though the meniscus had no function and when performing a meniscectomy they would perform a total meniscectomy which means that they would remove the entire meniscus regardless of whether or not it was torn. This unfortunately removed a lot of the cartilage and padding within the knee that ultimately led to the development of osteoarthritis in the knee after a meniscectomy. Because of that today, if a meniscectomy is required, we only perform a partial meniscectomy, meaning we only remove the piece of the meniscus that's torn or loose or otherwise what we consider is causing you the symptoms. By keeping the remaining tissue of your meniscus in place, we are maintaining that cushioning and decreasing your risk for the development of osteoarthritis after a meniscectomy. I hope this video has helped you to better understand exactly what meniscal tears are, how they are diagnosed, and how they are treated. Please refer to the next video regarding the specifics of the postoperative rehabilitation as well as what you can expect as you're attempting to return to work following a knee arthroscopy with meniscectomy. Thank you.